Romila, at the heart of all the uh, argument, the violence, the discourse, both rational and irrational that's been going on, is the notion of citizenship. Uh, shall we uh, talk about citizenship, historically speaking, is, you know, when did this notion come into being? You know, the thing we forget is that citizenship actually is a very modern notion. Uh, everybody goes back to ancient Athens and Greece and whatnot. But let's not forget that citizenship in Athens was extremely limited. It was about a third of the people living in the city of Athens that were citizens. The rest were slaves and other categories of uh, people who didn't have the freedom of citizenship. That's a different story altogether. That's an older society with its own background of tribal structures and this, that, and the other. Modern citizenship is something that comes very specifically at historical moments. And what is this historical moment at which it comes? Um, in the 18th century, you find a change going on uh, where various things happen Industrial, industrialization begins, capitalism comes in as providing the economic base of this new form of society, the middle class emerges. And the middle class is very aware of the fact that the older authorities, the feudal aristocracy, basing themselves on the labor of, um, of the subject people, uh, were declining. The, yeah, the place. middle class was taking over. So you get a historical change, very fundamental historical change, where the old relationship of the lord and the subject, the king and the subject, gradually changes to a new relationship between the state and the citizen. Now, both the state and the citizen are new because the state under this kind of system is very different from the monarchy of earlier times. And the citizen is no longer a subject. The citizen has rights, and that is the meaning of the rights of citizenship. Um, the, the citizen has rights and duties, and these rights and duties, obligations, choose whatever name you choose to give them, are in a sense what is spoken of in the Constitution. But before we get to the Constitution, suppose I um, uh, introduce the Indian context here. Uh, yes, there is a new uh, contract between the institution of the state and the individual citizen and the citizenry as a collective. But uh, in the case of India and many other countries, this is the result of a struggle uh, for freedom mm -hmm. from colonialism. Mm -hmm. So there is an um, additional edge there in the sense that a certain contract has been envisioned. And yeah. that is what, when we say the idea of India, is that what we're talking about? Well, the, the, where, where the colonial system interferes, um, let's not forget that in a sense, uh, citizenship didn't really exist under colonialism. It was still, the Indian was still the subject exactly. of the British yeah. rule, uh, the British monarch. Mm -hmm. So that old idea of the king and the subject continued under colonialism in the case of, yes. of, uh, of uh, colonialism in India. Uh, the real change really only comes when uh, India ceases to be a colony and becomes a nation. Now, my point is that that change in the relationship and the understanding of what is meant by the citizenship or by the citizen was not fully discussed, explored, understood in these years of independence. There's been a little hangover of the older subject idea and the realization that the citizen is the independent thinking Indian who has views and has the right to express those views, that didn't quite establish itself. So I think that one of the problems that we have today is making those in authority, anyone who's in authority, understand that in the change to what we call the nation, modernization, whatever it may be, 
The notion, if you're going to use the notion of the citizen, you have to understand that it's a changed relationship. And you have to concede that the contract of the change, which is the Indian constitution, has to be respected, like all contracts have to be respected. And then the setting of this particular contract, mm. um, which is why I refer to the idea of India during the freedom struggle, uh, is uh, taking cognizance of the fact that this is Oh, this is and will always be an extremely diverse citizen. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. That is understood. Uh, and that is understood in the sense that uh, citizenship, where it has succeeded, uh, and, you know, this is a change that practically every mm -hmm. part of the world has been undergoing in the last 200 years. Some parts actually seeing it now, I think, now. in contemporary Yeah, absolutely, uh, yes. So. Um, and in some ways also questioning the basis of citizenship and so on. What is very, very clear is that if you are going to continue with uh, democracy and the notion of citizenship, you have to understand that the definition of a citizen is not by indicating one item of identity. It has to be multiple. Yes. It has to take in every citizen, no matter what their thinking may be and what their pattern of culture may be. It does have to include everybody. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something which I think is causing a lot of problems because there is an assumption that, you know, the whole question of majoritarianism comes in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can't have democracy if you're going to base your citizenship on majoritarianism. A Chief Justice has uh, made special mention recently of uh, the duties uh, of the citizen. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, uh, immediately one wants to ask about the relationship between the, uh, the rights uh, of citizens uh, and uh, their duties. So if you were to sum up uh, some of these um, rights on the one hand and some of the duties. What, what would you... Um... I would say um, to treat it from the basics going up. The rights would be the rights to um, at least a minimum uh, reasonable livelihood, which means food, water, housing, etc. Employment, education, health care, and very important, once you've got these, the freedom to say what you wish to say, free speech, free thinking, and social justice. That is the only way in which you can then begin to talk about the possible equality of every citizen. Unless every citizen has these rights, uh, equality is not possible. Thank <laughs> you.